All right, welcome back to my channel, Fear the North, man. I'm excited. Friday's episode, we're continuing with the series in March, talking about wrestling, a subject that's near and dear to my heart as well. The video I wanted to bring to you today, I'm, so, I'm sorry, the video I wanted to bring to you, to you today is the emotional response that men have with wrestling. It's very, very interesting how wrestling, although it is choreographed and it is somewhat staged and uh, obviously planned out, it really can have a very honest and emotional pull, or rather it can pull a very honest and emotional response out of men when it's done correctly. Obviously when wrestling's bad, it's pretty cringeworthy, it's pretty awful. If you've never seen a bad match or a bad promo, check it out, you'll know what I'm talking about. But there's been moments in professional wrestling that have really translated in a very interesting manner. Also, too, I'm cooking myself some steak and some pork chops. So um, if the beep goes off or the, the timer goes off, excuse me, that's why pay no, pay, no, pay no attention to it. But anyways, there's been moments in wrestling that have been really important and that have been able to really cause men to really get in touch with their feelings. I know that may sound kind of hilarious, but a really good example of that is actually Ron Simmons. Um, I'm not sure if it was for WCW or Jim Crockett Promotions. I believe Jim Crockett Promotions ended up being purchased by WCW. But anyways, one of those promotions, if you know it, correct me in the comments. Uh, Russell Simmons, who was actually... Uh, I believe, I believe I'm saying his name right, yeah. He was actually a Florida State standout uh, football player and all-around stud athlete. It is the first black world champion in either Jim Crockett or WCW, whichever one of the two promotions was, was going at that time where Russell was in it. And if you go watch that, I believe he, I believe he beat Vader for the belt. I, I could be wrong, but I believe he beat Vader. If you go watch that match, the end of it, they pan the audience and you literally see men crying and you see people like cheering like, yeah, we did it. And it's such an amazing moment because here for the most part, everyone knows, like I said, this is stage and or scripted and, and you know, choreographed is a very elegant way to say it, but yet it still pulled out this very real and sincere emotion out of men. Obviously the women in the audience were very interested in, in it as well, but I'm focusing on men today because there's so many, there's really not a lot of outlets for men to express themselves emotionally. Women have all these different channels, all these different shows, This Is Us, Lifetime, if the women are old enough to watch it, et cetera, et cetera. But for men, partly because as men, we're not always really trying to be in touch with our feelings and be emotional. There's not a lot of outlets for it. So when they present themselves, it's interesting to me. And on top of that, something that's as sort of comical in many ways as professional wrestling can have this very real and sincere pull on a man's emotions, on a man's heart, and really make them feel, you know, human, if you will, or express themselves in a very human manner. And it really speaks to the power of the sport, of the art form that is professional wrestling. Uh, again, I touched on it in, in my last Friday's video with Mankind. When he won the world championship belt, Literally, people left the the viewership, or not the viewership, they, they changed the channel from WCW to WWE or WWF, whichever one it was at the time, just to see that happen. And it, and it, and it spoke to, you know, the, the importance of the every, in that situation, the, the guy that didn't look like the superstar or wasn't the giant winning the belt and how that invoked uh, and pulled out a sincere, real emotion out of men in that, in that scenario. And I find that very interesting. And when it's done well, when, when professional wrestling is done well, when, when the feuds are built up right, it really creates that in you. Probably one of the most iconic feuds, of course, I, I, I didn't see it. I, I would have been too young. But uh, Dusty Rhodes had had a feud with a guy for years. I can't think of his name now. But Dusty cuts this iconic promo where he says, It will never be over! And, and just saying that he's always going to want to, he's always going to want to go toe to toe with this guy. Well, they did this great uh, angle where it appeared that they had reconciled, 
and Dusty Rhodes, this individual, and again, I apologize if you know it and you find it, correct me in the, in the comments. They tag team, they, they got in, in a tag team match, in a cage match, against, I believe, the Assassins. And in the middle of the match, the individual whose name I can't remember, he turns on them. And at the end of the, and they just beat the crap out of Dusty Rhodes. And finally, all the good guys come in and chase them out and protect them. But at the end, uh, the promo, the individual that betrayed Dusty said, remember, Dusty, you said it would never be over. And it's created one of the most heated angles, one of the most amazing angles that Dusty Rhodes ever had. And it speaks to, well, I'm sorry, it brought out so much hatred and vitriol for that, for that athlete, for that wrestler. Uh, people hated the assassins too, but this guy in particular is supposed to be Dusty's ally. They were supposed to have reconciled, turned on him at, the, at his moment of need. And people just absolutely hated it. And part of the reason that is is because the pieces are there in professional wrestling for men to have an emotional response. There's the hero. There's the villain. Of course, they call him the face and the heel. There's the ally. There's the betrayer. There, there, there's the, uh, the uh, crown, if you will, which is the, the belt or whatever the case may be. All the elements are there, the physicality, the fight, if you will. All the elements are there to really create the stage or really set the stage, is a better way to say it, to where men can really express themselves emotionally. And I love that about wrestling. I'm really excited right now about AEW. I, my, my fandom for wrestling has been more nostalgic in, in recent years. I felt like wrestling's become you know, stagnant with obviously the WWE having the dominant commercial uh, uh, marketplace share, if you will, of what's going on. But with WWE, I'm sorry, with AEW popping up, I think they need to get some things a little bit tight. I think they need to tighten the screws a little better with some of their story arcs and some of their characters. But we could have a situation where the Monday Night Wars, that type of situation could come back, which would be, I mean, I would... It would, that would be fantastic if that's the case. But I wanted to touch on that today. And I know a lot of wrestling, it's fake, it's not real. These guys are all, you know, they're not real athletes. But the truth is, nothing could be further from the truth. These guys are amazing athletes. These guys are taking real hits. They are taking real uh, injuries. They are playing through, if you will, a real injury that could really be dangerous and or just cause them problems down the road all mainly because they love it and also because they're getting paid. And from that whole, you know, the good guy, the bad guy, the championship belt of the crown, the betrayer, etc., etc., that whole kind of recipe can create a great moment for men to really express themselves emotionally. I, and I just think it's fantastic. I wanted to touch on that today. Uh, if you've liked the content here today, I know it's a short video, so I apologize. Like, share, subscribe. Please leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. If you've liked it, if you th thought it was worthwhile, do me a favor. Come on back. And if you hated it, send it to someone you hate. I'll see you next time.